Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show. This is the Starting Million, and uh, I'm very excited, as usual, okay, for my next guest. And one of the things that I really enjoy is that I get to reach out to different people. I get to connect with a whole bunch of different people. I get to tap their brain, so to speak, kind of learn the best, get to ask them all the information that I, that I want. And the side bonus is that you can get to learn from it too, right? So you can just stick around and just listen in and just like learn along together with me to pick the brains of these different experts. Now, for today, the expert that I'm bringing on has very recently won an award, but this award is not just any kind of award. This award comes with a price. What is the price? The price is one million dollars. Ha! No, that's not how it's doing. Anyway, yeah, so... Yeah, yeah, you in order to get a what you need to have a million dollars that has gone through your business. So it's not an easy feat. It's a it's a feat where a lot of people want to accomplish, it's, but it's not easy to, to achieve. And today, I here, this fellow over here, get to pick his brains. And not only that, if you stick around, watch along with the show, you'll be able to learn from him too. Okay, so who is my next guest? Let me just introduce him a little bit. Some of you may know him, some of you don't. Here is what I'm going to do. I'm going to just show his handsome face and I'm going to describe him a little bit. He, shared, he has shared me a very, very long profile and I decided, you know what? He's, there's so much accolades he has won. So I decided, you know what? I'll give you the highlights, the, the highlight of it. But don't let my summarized version short, uh, short change you, okay? There's a lot of stuff he's not talking, he's not, he's not saying. But I'm going to share it. Anyway, so without further ado, uh, let's go. So this is Joseph. And Joseph is the author of Live Life by Your Own Design, which empowers individuals and equips business leaders with proven frameworks and strategies to stay on top of the game. So he was featured on Straits Times, is the recipient of the Singapore Prestige Brand Award, the SPBA. And like I mentioned earlier, he was the he is rather the recipient of a new two comma club two comma club award okay awarded by the click funnel so this is the thing so some what is click what is this a two fun, comma thing that means you know you have earned one z one comma zero 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 comma zero 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 so that means you'll earn at least a million that's why there's two commas so he has won that what is a new award that he won and i'm very uh excited for joseph to come on together with me so and his business has helped over 100 plus businesses of which Two are billion dollar conglomerates. So, without further ado, allow me to bring onto the screen Mr. Joseph. Go! Woo! All right! Hey everyone, thanks, Asher. Wow, such a powerful and energetic introduction. Wow, I feel like I'm going into WWE. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just need like the fireworks. And like, <laughs> After you need to do like, I don't know, what wrestler, like Kane, psh, then some kind of action that can blow you up. <laughs> uh, you, you reveal your age already. <laughs> Yes, I'm, yes. So it's, I'm proudly proud of that. I came from the age of good wrestling, <laughs> like Stone Cold la, Then there's the Rock lah. This kind of stuff. That time is is like awesome age, awesome age. Thank you, yeah, thank yeah, you for yeah. having me. Yeah, I'm very happy to have you here. Anyway, guys, so this is Joseph. I'm very happy to have him here. So, uh, Joseph. So I would like everyone over here to kind of know who you are. So. We want to get in real quick because there's a lot. We have only like an hour with you. Uh, you're a very busy guy and there's a lot of businesses that want your time. And so this is the first question I will ask. I want to ask a little bit about how do you actually get started? And with regards to this question, if I were your friend, okay, then I, that's in, okay, I'm not your friend, I'm assuming. So, but if I knew you from like in your schooling days, during your schooling days, okay, can you describe a little bit about what kind of person you are? And then so that everyone can get a little bit of a background about who you are. Yeah, well, thanks for asking me this question. Wow, it goes back to probably close to 20 years back. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> I go back to probably my secondaries at JC Day. I'm a very um, fun-loving guy, la. I mean, and also pretty playful. So I always like to, you know, ask, you know, very interesting questions to my teachers and also to my fellow friends and classmates. Well, I think that is about me. And I'm also someone that is always curious and finding out about things that, you know, I can actually do to add value to the world. Mm, okay. So how is that different from now, though? Well, what in the past, <laughs> okay, in the past, I think as a kid, uh, probably more of a dreamer uh, to dream about, you know, like how you, know, you can be someone 
some you know people that are successful in their own ways so however for now i'm very thankful that you know through my last 10 years in the professional world right i have actually grown to understand where is my strength and also how i can actually help the group of people or the community that i'm capable of helping which is business okay. owners right so when you were starting out in your schooling days okay uh, we have to look a little bit about the question of the schooling days uh, what were your ccas as i will ask what were the activities that you used to do well i'm um, quite <laughs> quite a few okay so uh during secondary days was uh national cadet corps and then when i'm in jc i'm in table tennis school team and also taekwondo oh okay okay so you are uh, a uniform group and if and if anybody messes with you you know how to kick balls <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, <I'm>, uh, <laughs> not really <laughs> i'm just messing with you <laughs> so instead of now doing like kicking people and learning how to do that and smacking balls around on a table uh so the difference is that now you actually kind of bring a lot of value to uh, customers and which you have done so with 400 over different companies and businesses okay so but at which point though did you decide to get really serious about what you do is there like a turning point in your life that caused you to change I believe after 21 years old, right, that's where I found my calling. So I remember on my 21st uh, birthday cake, actually is one of my godbrother. Then he, he actually um, inspired and motivated me. He gave me this to live to inspire lives. So it was actually written on my 21st birthday cake. And that really got me thinking, you know, I want to go in that direction. But of course, over the last 10 over years, right, I've been thinking about how I can really put myself out there to be able to do something that is actually impactful and valuable to people. So, I mean, after 10 over years in the business world, right, I realized that in the digital marketing is the way how I can actually transform the way how business are marketing online. That's how I found my calling and also my superpower. Mm, wow. So your cousin, was that was your cousin? No, it's my godbrother. Your yeah. godbrother, okay. So your yes. godbrother gave you a kick that said uh, to live to inspire, is that it? To live to inspire lives. Live to inspire lives, okay. So I need that kick. <laughs> but, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I need that kick. But uh, that kick took you, uh, so it took you how long before that, that message, that, that kick itself, right, that got you to, um, okay, because I, I, I'm pretty sure by now the cake you finished eating already. <laughs> so <laughs> what... <laughs> All right, I got a lot of rubbish jokes, by the way. So thanks for laughing long together with me. Okay, it's just one of the things I do. So you've already finished that cake for a long time ago, but the message has stuck with you for such a long time. Um, mm -hmm. What caused you to actually really remember those words, though? Because I, a lot of people with words like this can tend to be like, you know, superfluous, they're just nice words on the cake. But what caused mm -hmm. you to really remember it so deeply that caused you to change? Mm. Wow. Well. Uh, that's a long story, so I will actually keep it short. Okay, one of the things that actually got me to really feel deeply about what I want to do in life is that uh, remember when I was actually in my uni days, I was in the east part of Singapore doing a survey. So I was actually in that area. Uh, I visited one of the household. So it's actually a one room flat. So during that point of time, it's, it's about 7 p.m. in the evening. And I saw uh, an uncle that's coming back home. La. So he's actually wearing a uniform. So one look, I could tell that he's actually a blue-collar worker. So when I see him, uh, he actually said that, uh, okay, uh, give me a while. I will actually send a dinner to my family first before I can take up your survey. Then I saw that, you know, he's actually carrying a bag of um, noodles, la, mi ring to his family. And on curiosity, I actually peeped in to see. So I see that it's actually a family of seven, a father, mother, three kids from the age of two years old to probably five years old, and then two grandparents. So it's a family of seven that stay in a one room flat. So wow. I see it's, the whole flat was empty, no furniture, no nothing, you know. Then after that, they were just sitting on the floor. And what I see was that the wife actually pour out the migo ring onto a big purple bowl. And then she actually get them seated in a round circle. And, you know, they actually just take one one mouth of the Miko ring and pass the bowl around. So wow. when I witnessed that scene, right, I was really very emotional and heart-wrenching. So I was thinking in Singapore, we are actually a developed country. 
how could we have like still this type of um, underprivileged community or families in Singapore? So that really mm. got me thinking. And that's the point whereby I told myself, right, uh, in order to uh, minimize or, you know, get lesser of such in Singapore, I want to do something that will be able to help level the playing field. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Wow. That's a very interesting. Uh, that's a very good story to to see something of people who are in a sense in a sense living a life of uh, need. I would say maybe maybe it's need, but at least that financially looks tough. That is a challenging situation, and yes. then to get that inspire you to want to do more. I think that's uh, awesome thing. So anyway, just want to bring up this comment again, Nicholas. Thanks for coming to join. So thank you so much to from joining us. Uh, stick around, Nicholas. I think you might learn. You might enjoy some stuff over here. So. Uh, with that being said, of that the experience you've gone through, so live to uh to to inspire, and then seeing this story, they they mesh it together. Uh, has any anybody actually asked you these questions before, though? <laughs> yes, actually, there are people who ask me, you know, my why, and mm -hmm. this is actually what I really feel strongly about it, because it's something that still remains in my heart, right, after so many years. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay. So with that said, then now things are a bit different. So with you've already made a fair amount of difference. Now you're actually impacting lives and, and changing businesses. So I'd like to find out a little bit more about what's going on now with your business. So perhaps maybe now is maybe get into the little bit of a meet. So I think again, thank you so much for sharing that. So can you just share uh with me and also with everyone over here, right? What can share about your business, the expertise that led you to winning your two comma click funnels award? Hmm. If I can summarize, right, uh, it's actually probably these three things. Clarity, clarity of the vision and the goal, okay? And a lot of determination and uh, perseverance and also a lot of actions. So I won't take this credit on my own because we couldn't have done this, right, without the entire team. So mm -hmm. we have our copywriters, we have our founder builders, we have our creatives, and, you know, everyone just, you know, like a clock works, we are able mm -hmm. to do this because everyone functions as a team and we really live this together. Mm. Okay. So like you say over here, let me put it over here, it's clarity, determination, and action, right? Yes. So, so and of course, I think this is one of the toughest things to do. Like you actually mentioned perseverance as well. And I think since you actually mentioned since you were 21 and until now, uh, it's at least... How long is it ago? <laughs> um, I'm, I'm turning 35 uh, this Saturday. <laughs> okay, okay, still younger than you, me. Still younger than me. Oh, yeah, this Saturday is your birthday. Congratulations. Happy birthday, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, what's going to be on that cake? What's the what the words that is going to be on the cake? Um, I, actually, I don't fancy eating cakes, la, but I, I think. Okay. No, no cake for this year. But what I want to mm -hmm. do is that I will probably, like every year, right, I will actually post about a reflection of what I have actually like achieved or what changes or values have I provided over the last one year. So I'll be putting okay. it into my Facebook post. Okay, I'm looking forward to that. So instead, so you're just giving us the, the cake, the sweet stuff instead. Lah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's see. All right, so with that question also, you, you shared a little bit about expertise. So um, technically in terms of what was the service that you provide in your business though, exactly? What is it the, the exact service that you provide? Okay, so like uh, for Hyperfame Digital, we help business owners, right, or businesses to be able to build their presence online. So some of the vehicles that we use are social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and also YouTube. So as you can see, right, Facebook and Instagram, they are actually owned by Facebook. And then for YouTube, it's actually owned by Google. So these two are the largest search engine, right, or is in the world in terms of, of course, the English community. So we want to tap on these two vehicles to be able to reach out to as many of your target audience as possible. And of mm -hmm. course, that wouldn't be possible if the business owner do not have clarity on their business itself. So that's mm -hmm. where we come in to understand more about their business. And then we actually help them to come up with a strategy to be able to bring them to the next step or the next phase of their business. Okay. So you, you're using uh, so paid social media uh, to help them with the different strategies they have. So can you just also tap, share a little bit about, uh, you mentioned there's 100 over kinds of businesses. What kind of businesses are there? Hmm. 
Okay, so I, I always strongly believe in this. Uh, if I actually ask any business people, right, that, you know, who are your target audience? And if they tell me everyone, or let's say, for example, beauty salon, then they say that, oh, all females are my target audience. Yeah, or let's say interior designers, uh, all homeowners are my ta target audience or my clients. So I think this is uh, absolutely bullshit. Why? Because if you cannot find the exact problems that you solve, you will not be able to locate the kind of target audience also. Well, for us in Hyperfame Digital, right, we actually niche down into these three. Education, like for example, uh, education provider like tuition centers, enrichment center, um, training providers, seminar providers. And then second one is actually we touch on beauty and wellness. So there are many different beauty and wellness uh, centers or salons in Singapore. And the third one is actually interior design specialized in residential area. So these are the three niches that Hyperfame Digital has actually helped over hundreds of clients so far. Mm, awesome. So if you happen to be, you know, if you're watching right now, you happen to be in any of this in the education business, I mean, the beauty and wellness and the interior design. Hey, hit him up because one of the, the highlights, I would say, of being a 2CC, 2 Combo Club award, uh, a winner, award winner is that, you know, if you are a business that can't bring results, you can't reach that level. It's very hard. And you got to be able to help your customers win to reach that level, right? So I think you've already helped a lot of them to win as well. And afterwards, of course, they'll be returning customers because uh, that's how a business can, can, can carry on. If they keep coming back, your customers win, then they come back, right? That only makes full sense. So again, if you're watching this right now, uh, if you're again into the education business, the beauty and wellness and interior design, hit him up because uh, I'm pretty sure right now, if you're watching this, Joseph is going to take good care of you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And you want to send him a cake, you know, so he would probably just like, <laughs> just send him a cake. He might give you some extra stuff. I have no idea. I'm just rubbish, throwing rubbish here anyway. <laughs> okay. So. With regards to the marketing that you do, because in social media, there is always two schools of thought. There is the paid media and then there is the free way of doing things. Okay, so when it comes to this situation, right, why, what, what's, that? what's the difference in there? You know, why can't people just focus on doing either paid only or, or do uh, organic only? You know, is, mm -hmm. there, is there a need to do both or stuff like that? Maybe you can just tap on that a little bit. Okay, so if we go into this topic, right, we can really go into like three days, three nights and still ongoing. So I'll try, try to uh, break down, down into very simple bite size. La. So mm. there is actually organic. Organic means that a lot of people, they are using um, social media to actually brand themselves or they are trying to market certain products or services of their business. So you will see people, they put a photo or a video, which we call it as creatives, then they will text uh, certain copywritings, we call it copywritings, and we try to mm -hmm. post it out to see how many people actually uh, engage or, you know, actually respond to what they post. So these are organic Facebook posts, Instagram posts, yeah. And the other side, right, of it is you see in, when you're scrolling social media, you see like the word sponsored over there. Some of it, you will see either a image, a GIF, or actually a video. So those are paid form of advertising and that will actually mm -hmm. reach out to newer audience. So for organic, right, uh, if you actually know the algorithm, it's about 10% of your, your followers or your friends. Let's say, example, if, you, if your page or your personal profile has about 1,000 people, so each organic post will reach out to about 100 of them, probably. Mm. So at the same time, right, if you only have these 100 people that can see your post, and you need to break it down into how many people will actually react or respond to your post. So this is actually organic site. Whereas let's say, for example, if your followers are not big enough, you want to actually tap on the paid advertising. Why? Because paid advertising, right? It depends on your budget every day. You will be able to reach out to different number of people who are new target audience, not only your friends, not only in Singapore, you can actually target to the rest of the world also. So if you are talking about if you want to do it the organic way, it will be slow and longer process. Okay, if you want to do it a paid way, right, it can actually accelerate your success or your growth. But mm. again, when it comes to this too, right, I will say that it will be good only if you have clarity of your business. That means offline you are doing things that you know is actually helping you to build your business, your success already. Then you replicate it online it will actually give you the kind of um, acceleration to your business growth. 
Whereas, let's say, for mm. example, you are only starting out, you are still testing, you are still not too sure, you know, who are your target audience, what is actually the services or the product that people like or in demand, right? I will suggest that you actually can use the organic way first. Mm. Okay, mm. so because when it comes to organic uh, crowd, you mentioned something very interesting, only 10%. Of the people in your your let's say your profile who actually get to see the content that you put out there. So the question I have is, in this case, right? Because I've seen accounts where you know they are they have let's say a thousand people, a thousand different connections, and then they have pretty good engagement rates. Uh, but after they have let's say maybe a hundred, two hundred people who actually liked it, commented, so there's some kind of life there. But then there are accounts who which I have five thousand, four thousand nine hundred, four thousand whatever. But the the engagement levels, the post level is abysmal. It's like zero. It's like one, and that one is that him, him, him or herself. So how how is that how is that happening though? Why does that happen? Okay, I guess uh in the past I see this phenomenon of people trying or you know frantically adding people to their page or to their own profile. So what they do is that they, they just go into different groups or they just go into friends, friends, and then they start to add as friends. So they want to grow their followings because they understand the algorithm. If I have bigger followings, right, more people can see my content. But if you are doing that, right, without having a qualification method, that means you are practically taking a revolver or five rounds, trying to shoot everywhere. You might not hit anyone. So what we want to do is that as you are building your quantity, your base, right, you want to get the right target audience that is actually in your group, in your pitch, or as your friend. Yeah. So that's why prob probably you say that, you know, there are people who have more followings, like for example, 5,000, but only himself, he likes his own post. Whereas there are people <laughs> probably they only have like 1,000, but there are a lot of huge engagement and response because this person, he consciously, mindfully built his space with the right target audience. Mm, okay. So when it comes to businesses, uh, how can a business then with, uh, you know, build their business, should they be doing... Uh, organic should they be doing paid should they be doing both or one or the either which one should they be doing on yeah i guess earlier i have mentioned if you are someone or a business that has success already so mm -hmm. well of course success is according to how you define it so different industry they have different success so let's say for example you see that you know your certain product or services right solve certain industry problem or solve certain consumer problem and you know that it's in demand so what you want to do is that you want to replicate that online. When you do the paid marketing in that way, yes, you will see that you will accelerate your success or your growth. However, let's say, for example, you have been in business for one year, two years, three years, or some people, even after five years or seven years, right, they still haven't find clarity in their business. And you don't know how many things that you are selling or products, right, or services that is actually helping you to bring in the revenue. And then you just choose that one or two, right, in your guts feeling to actually do the paid advertising. That will actually accelerate you, not to your growth, but to your death. Yeah, wow. so that's the key of it because digital marketing can amplify and it amplify you to your growth and success or amplify you faster to your demise. Mm, okay, so how, what, what would they, what can someone do to avoid going towards the demise? Because most of the time people don't, don't know. They really don't know. They just think, you know, throw money, it will stick. Just keep throwing money and then something will work. How can someone know for sure that, you know, what they do is not actually causing much more damage though? Hmm. Okay, so number one is that currently, let's say, for example, in your business, uh, you need to track the numbers. Let's say, for example, you have a brick and mortar retail. Then you got to see, you know, people who are responding to you or coming to your shop, right? What are the services or what are the products that people are buying? And then, of course, you can speak to your um, customers or clients to understand why are they buying this or why do they go for this service? So you understand that these are the demography or this is your target audience that are facing this problem and you can solve this problem of theirs. That's why they are coming back. Yeah, so mm -hmm. this is one way. And secondly is that, let's say, for example, you want to actually test out on the online space. I will suggest that you actually a portion of your budget to actually do a test first. So you can actually test out that product or service that you see certain offline success already. And then once you see that the numbers is actually growing, is effective, then you scale up in terms of your ad spend or your ad budget. That's how you should actually scale and grow your business. Hmm. 
Okay, thanks for sharing that. And uh, looks like Waiman has joined us as well. Hey, good evening to you, Waiman. And uh, Nicholas has a question over here. I'm not sure if you, will, if you can actually, well, I'm pretty sure you have to because I'm pulling on speed. <laughs> okay, so you know, for again, don't you have to educate your followers on turning on notifications and setting your accounts to place to high in the accepted engagement list? Any any thoughts on this? For organic, mm. oops, let me just use something instead. Yeah, uh, don't you have to educate your uh, followers on how to set their accounts correctly to ensure they see your notifications? Hmm. I okay. I don't really get what he's trying to ask for this. Uh, Asher, can you make sense out of this for me, please? Okay. So. Is, is, that means, okay, don't you have to educate your followers on how to set their accounts correctly to ensure they see your notifications? That means uh, those who are following you, you actually advise them, you know, click on, for example, subscribe or just click on see first, stuff like that. Because most notifications, they are by default, they don't show up, they don't show up at all, you know. Mm. You, don't you have to educate them on that? Do you educate them on that? Okay, this is a very interesting um, sharing and, and also inquiry. So... For me, I have uh, not encountered such before because, uh, okay, probably these are the, te the technical aspect of it. So, well, you can do it if you think that it, has, it will be more effective for you. But so far for my audience, right, I have never educated them to turn on <laughs> notification to see, you know, like I'm going to post new things. Yeah. So for mm -hmm. me, I think, yeah, if, if it works for you, yeah, please go ahead. Okay, okay. So I think this one might be, I think it might make a bit more sense if let's say we're doing this on perhaps on YouTube, I guess. Uh, would that make a bit more sense if it's on YouTube? Yeah, well, I, I guess it, it really, yes. So it, is this notification serve as like a reminder or giving people pre -amp that you are going to, you know, post certain content and then of course to also go and, and watch and be engaged or, or to really get educated by it. But to me, I think, uh, it really depends on you, your profile. So uh, as mentioned, for me, I don't do this. And yet, uh, I still can reach out to the audiences that I want to reach out to. Mm, mm. Okay. And so, more importantly, I was, your, your, your customers are the ones that are getting their, the results that they want, right? That's more yes. much more important. Yeah. Mm. Or maybe you can just share a little bit also on uh, maybe any, any case studies you can think of with regards to how you may, were able, was able to help a uh, customer get good results based on your, your strategies. Hmm. Okay. Uh, sorry, before I forget, probably I will go back to uh, Nicholas' uh, query. So let's say, for example, mm -hmm. if you are a coach, if you are an educator, if you are a content creator, yes, maybe uh, what you are asking, right, and also uh, putting an action on that will help. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if, if, yeah, I would say that will be helpful for those. So educator, um, trainer, coaches, content creator, yes. Mm -hmm. Sorry, so back to back to Asher, your question will be um, give you a case studies. Okay, so as mentioned, right, we have helped uh, these three niches, education, um, beauty salons, um, wellness, and also interior designers. Yes. So let's Good say, for example, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. So like for, for, for beauty, our beauty clients, right, what we do is that you see in beauty, right, it's actually very competitive and challenging. And especially, right, most of the beauty salons, they have huge array of services, all the way from hair to facial to body to legs to everything. So many a times, right, when we speak to our uh, beauty salons owner, they will be telling us, right, I have like 1,001 services that I want to market. So will you be able to market all these services for us? So, well, I believe, right, yes, definitely different services actually helps uh, to solve different problems or, you know, actually give uh, this um, service to different females or males. However, what we want to strive to do is that uh, we always believe in that one, that one or two services, right, that will be able to bring in the customers to know about you first. So that is actually like what you represent best. So let's say, for example, I'm talking about a beauty salons that have head-to-toe services. But let's say, for example, facial. Facial is the one that they are very proud of and they know that that is actually the number one thing that customer would like to know about them. Mm -hmm. And then I will actually suggest that then if that's the case, let's, let's go into, you know, educating the public, you know, how good is your facial? How does it differentiate you with other beauty salons that are also doing facial? 
and also mm -hmm. who are you helping to solve certain problems so from there of course they he or she might ask that then what about other services well you see mm -hmm. when the customer actually walk into your shop definitely you can upsell downsell or cross sell and that's mm -hmm. where you get your people to actually know about your other services but in the online space we try to make it very clear and concise to let people know that what do you really represent so that people comes to you mm. Okay, okay. So in, in the, the, the simple strategy is really just to focus on one thing that you're really, really good at. And then afterwards, you can branch out to other stuff. Like that's what you're trying to say. Uh, mm. Am I right? Yes, okay. correct. So I think uh, Nicholas also did mention over here, right, in terms of this, because on Facebook, only 10% of your posts to show natively. So you ask them to turn on follow up, you will get them also. I think like what uh, Joseph has said correctly, if you happen to be in the uh, educational space, okay, I think this makes a lot of sense as well. Uh, but if you happen to be in another industry, uh i'm not too sure whether <laughs> you will continue i mean I, I i don't do i do once in a while do facial and stuff like that but i'm not too sure if i want to see that every time you know <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i don't know about that. Like, that that depends on the customer i guess but uh it, it could work it could work yeah so i think he did mention a little bit about uh doing pixel advertising so uh like he says he pixelized paid advertising and whether it helps train your pixel for for like audience marketing anything you want to you can touch on on this okay anyway, so, anyway, Nicholas, thanks so much for engaging with us i really appreciate you <laughs> yeah, I, I believe uh nicholas is someone that is actually in the digital space really the question that he asked is actually very apt well but uh i think uh thanks thanks for the question nicholas and thanks for being you know very active participating with us i think for here is that uh i have I want to share with people more about you know the power of using social media and also the digital marketing space so if in terms of the technical know-how we can actually take it offline mm. thank you so much mm. okay so nicholas you know who to hit up now so just phew, send uh, connect with uh, joseph which i will also send a link later anyway it's very easy to find joseph all you need to do is just look at his name down here <laughs> over here right just go to <laughs> joseph go live you'll be able to find him so uh okay so but with regards to because when it comes to the whole marketing cons the whole marketing business itself right there's a lot of things to do there's a lot of step one step two step three you need to have this element you need to have that element so in this case right if you were to break down your expertise or, or the knowledge you have into let's say a three to five step kind of process uh, what would it be mm. what would that be hmm. okay so i I have to give credit to uh, Russell Brunson. Okay, he's also one of the mentor that inspire us to be able to hit the two comma club. So I remember Russell Brunson talk about this. If you are to look at these three things, right, uh, to put it in a simple manner, you'll be able to get your target audience to really know more about you. So the mm -hmm. first is actually hook. So hook may means that you know what is that thing that attract your target audience wanting to know about you? H O O K hook. And that also can mean that the problems that you want to solve for your target audience. So this is number one, hook. And secondly, once you get the attention already or you attract your target audience, the second one is actually to let them know about the story. So story may mean your own story, your own experience. It may mean customer story. That means like their testimonial of you or their feeling or experience or their transformation after they have actually engaged your service or use your product. And mm. once you have that, right, people will find that it's actually uh, relevant, authentic, and people can relate to it rather than, you know, you just say that, hey, I got this thing, come and buy from me. So you got to fill up the gap. So the story mm. is the one that can fill up the gap. And lastly, if you have gotten their attention and you have gotten them to understand and educate them to know that you know what product or services right do you represent and the last is actually called offer so offer mm -hmm. may mean things like you know you want them to purchase a small item from you or let's say for example uh, one of the offer that we do for our um, service-based business like interior designers right is to actually offer an appointment to talk about the design consultation so depending on your different um, industry and niches, you got to think about the offer. Offer does not mean just the product or service. Offer means the thing that you want people to take an action upon. So in a way, it could be something like a call to action. Mm, okay. So with this, let me just put it over here like this, if I were to summarize that. Okay. So the, the first thing you want is talk about the hook. 
which is also to grab their attention. They have to, you want to add, have the story. So to educate your customers and their prospects, rather their customers on the story behind that and there's educational process. And of course, you want them to take some action where, where there's an offer there in place so that they can uh, carry on their journey. They can experience the services. They can experience the product. Am I right? Uh, did I cover this correctly? Yeah, correct. Well summarized. <laughs> <laughs> okay, steady. Hang on, hang on. Must check, must check. <laughs> okay, so okay now, I, my friend over here, Wyman, has a question which I think he was he asked a little bit earlier, but I thought it was quite interesting to bring him over here. His question I, that he has is, what is the biggest change do you think that is required for SMEs in the brick and mortar landscape while hoping to move into the e-commerce and digital space? That's a, I think it's a slightly different thing, but I think could still apply to with the knowledge and expertise you have. Yeah, go for it if you mm. want. Okay, so I mean, I've been speaking to uh, businesses, right? One of the things that, yes, a lot of people, they mentioned to me that they, they, they understand the power of the digital space. They understand about, you know, innovation. And I think one of the most used word in 2020 is called pivot. Okay, mm -hmm. so a lot of business owners say, I know, I want to pivot. I want to actually, you know, like embark on digital transformation, etc. But they will tell you, but then you will hear a lot of different things already from there. So, mm -hmm. well, to summarize, right, I, I guess it goes back to this thing called a mindset change. So for people who give you, I want then they give you thousand and one things. Then after that, the but. Okay, so they might not be ready for this change. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, of course, I understand time and resources are very scarce and some of them, they might really face a lot of challenges in terms of their business. However, right, I think ultimately is whether you want it bad enough or not. If you don't want it, you will have 1001 excuses. If you want it, you will find 1001 ways to make it happen. Mm, okay, okay. So like, uh, I think interestingly enough, it's like a sandwich, not the bread on each side, that people want a feeling that creates the feeling to buy, which also applies to what we we're talking about earlier, which is the, this one over here. I hope, I hope I got you correct, Nicholas. Okay. So thanks for all this. I think we still have a few more questions to go. And I, I really appreciate that you're able to handle all these questions. And this is a clear sign of a real expert because not a lot of people can just straight up ramble answers. Okay. To throw questions just thrown at them randomly. Okay. It's, uh, I didn't. <laughs> I should have prepared you earlier for this. Uh, that's not my, my fault. That's not my fault. I should have prepared you earlier for this. That you know, sometimes the people on my show just like to like throw questions, and I'll just like bring them on because I think that's this because sometimes when we leave questions all the way to the end, we kind of lose the context of that question. Then you kind of mm -hmm. wondering, hey, what did he? Why is what is question? Or what does it mean? So that's one of the reasons why I bring questions in while we're on show, so we have a little bit more context as to why we are asking that right so and Waiman is saying here great insight thanks for sharing thanks for asking Waiman thank you so much for coming on the show as well so okay so now then this other question that I have right so we've actually broken down that so when it comes to paid advertising itself right should people do it themselves or should they be outsourcing that because like uh, clearly you already know what you you've done you already know how to do this uh, paid advertising this paid social media marketing you clearly know how that's done but still a lot of people would rather do it themselves because of course they don't see the value in passing that bucket to someone else what's your take on this okay so uh again in my mind i'm thinking about a, a few different um phases of businesses right and also different sizes of businesses of course let's say for example you're talking about um, smes or micro smes that probably less than 10 people including the business owner himself, right? So what I suggest is that because in the past, right, I have actually worked with uh, business owners, like for example, lawyers, okay? Mm -hmm. So I remember working with him uh, some years back is that, well, amazingly, right? His digital marketing knowledge, right? It can be on par or probably even higher than mine. So mm -hmm. after which, right, I asked him this question. Hey, uh, Mr. X, so are you actually a lawyer or a digital marketer? Your knowledge <laughs> of digital marketing is so much higher than me, you know? And, and so after that, I actually got him to think about his uh, lawyer business, his legal business. And then he realized that, yeah, he's actually spending his time and effort in the way whereby it's actually not generating him income. So mm. if I'm talking about uh, SMEs or micro SMEs, right, that have like um, the business owner involved in the business itself, then I would suggest that 
possibly focus your attention in what moved the needles. That means mm. focus on your sales processes, fulfillment or operation processes, and also think about how you can actually create system or processes to help your team to continue to scale the business consistently. So in business, we talk about consistency, not just, you know, like today I feel very good. I can actually close sales. Tomorrow, I may not feel as good. Then it's, you know, like, or maybe my closing from 40% drop to 20%. So you mm. got to have the system and process from sales to operation to fulfillment to customer retention. You need that in order for you to scale. So especially mm. talking about businesses that is possible to expand through like franchise um, chains, branches, more so you need to come out with system and process to help you to scale at will. Mm. Okay. So I like the way you're saying is that you let every business focus on what they're good at, because even though you may not know exactly, like you say, the lawyer who knows a lot, but to be able to translate head knowledge into actual skill and not distract from their core expertise. It's tough. It's a tough thing to do. And, uh, and I think to be able to let you focus on that, I think that's one of the big values on that. And uh, I think, let me see, I think there was a comment over here. Yeah. So uh, Nicholas says, thanks to you for that. Very helpful to get different perspectives and he will connect with you soon. Hey, awesome. Okay. So thank you, Nicholas. Okay. I'm not too sure why, actually. I'm just it's a bit distracting, but because I don't know why I'm getting more and more orange. <laughs> this, this doesn't usually happen. I'm like, why am I becoming more and more orange? Okay, so anyway, uh, <laughs> it's just me. I'm like, I'm, I'm getting a sun tan while I'm talking to him. Like, I, I'm not so dark one. Okay, but anyway. So, uh, yeah. So, when it regards to this, I like that you mentioned this, that every business should focus on their core expertise. And then afterwards, uh, you know, let someone else who's good at it. Because one other thing I really think is very helpful is that uh is which was basically what you said right when you can focus on what you're good at you let someone else take care of the things that have you to empower your business because when you try to put your hands on too many things you you will, you will mess things up it messes things up okay so okay. do you have any any case studies for yourself on this other than that lawyer uh on that that has helped someone who possibly was trying to do everything himself and then you took over again helped out is there another example okay. you can think of? So like, uh, okay. So earlier I shared about beauty clients really. Now I'll share about uh, interior design. I have this uh, client of mine, right? Uh, he's, he's actually considered as a micro SME, less than 10 people in his company in this interior design firm. So previously he shared with me, you know, he, he do his own uh, social media paid posts and then he, he do his own paid advertising, etc. So mm -hmm. he has a budget for it. Like, okay, like, so I just put an example of $500. So after which I asked like, okay, uh, Mr. J, so $500, right? Uh, end up each month, you know, what are the kind of results that you get? Then probably he'll say, yeah, there are some inquiries. And then, you know, after I talk to them, actually mm, maybe one or zero closure. So mm -hmm. after which, he actually asked me, you know, what did he do wrong or how can he improve? Well, I can definitely tell him what he can improve on after understanding how he do his own digital marketing. However, right, it doesn't take me to just educate him and he can do it immediately because, you know, people that has went through this specialization of digital marketing, right, they went through years and they have probably spent a lot of money on this uh, social media uh, advertising in order to be who they are. Like for example, mm -hmm. for Hyperfame Digital, we manage like millions of dollars in terms of ad spend every month, every year. Mm -hmm. So definitely we have went through the ups and we have learned many lessons, right? Falling down on, you know, like uh, how we can actually optimize further in terms of uh, media buying and then how we can actually optimize in terms of our ads, how we can optimize further in terms of our funnels. So these are the mm -hmm. things that if you are not in digital marketing space, you probably will not have so much opportunity to actually learn. Mm. And of course, if you are a business owner, what you want to do, you want to actually reach out to the right target audience and then to be able to close them, to be able to bring value to them. So mm -hmm. I always tell my clients, right, let us do the front portion, then you do the fulfillment. So mm. that's actually like a synergy or actually a working relationship between me and my clients. Right, right. And I think with regards to, in fact, usually the front part is the hardest 
<laughs> I think for those in the business, you know, the front part is the hardest. And if you can let someone take care of that, by all means, you know, it's not that bad, right? So, and anyway, and there's another question that came in from my friend. This one, Kenneth, this question, uh, thank you, I owe you one, okay? So, <laughs> this question, I'm, this one is not set up by me, uh, I'm telling you, Joseph, not set up by me. Uh, right? So, <laughs> he's curious, how would you advise this fellow over here to make it profitable? 5x what I what he does. Say say this sort of uh, live stream programs with other guest speakers. For uh, this one, Kenneth, thanks, uh, thanks. <laughs> Okay, so uh, thanks, Kenneth. Uh, thanks, Asher. No problem. All right, so earlier we, we had a little chat before we go into live. So I know from Asher that uh, he's actually a content creator. He's an actor and he also do branding. So that's the reason why he's actually doing this interview and this show. And he has one upcoming program. Can I tell them? Uh, yeah, <laughs> okay. go ahead, I mean, yeah. It's called On Camera Confidence. So he wants to, you know, um, teach, he wants to educate, he wants to impart his knowledge on how you can actually present yourself persuasively on camera. So like what we are doing now, we are doing live, you know, it's actually not engineer, not stage. It's really yes. presenting, <laughs> speaking, and of course, wanting to bring more value to our audience. Yeah. Then after which, you know, I think the... Okay, we, we didn't really go too much in depth in terms of what is actually uh, the, the curriculum or his his content about in terms mm -hmm. of on-camera confidence. So what Kenneth is asking is that, of course, I will see that the reason why Asha is doing this is to give himself more exposure to his uh, followers, to more people. Clearly, I need more and... exposure right now because <laughs> of my color is like, <laughs> it's like orange. I mean, <laughs> yeah. And well, you see with all these contents, right? Asha will be able to put it into, or break it down, break it down into things that he can actually let people learn about and also success model. So in, in a way whereby, let's say for example, we talk about success modeling, right? It's actually to find someone that you can role model or you see certain success and you are able to dissect it and break it down and able to make sense out of each of the steps on how he have managed to achieve it. So kind of, I believe what Asher will be doing next is actually to dissect and break down each of this life and teach people how they can present themselves and also persuasively in terms of in front of camera, which is on camera confidence. Mm, I say, wow, <laughs> this one not, not prep one. Nah. This is he, Joseph straight up can just pitch already. He's so ready to do this. <laughs> thanks, man. Thanks, man. Wow, this one is like, okay, Kenneth and Joseph, thank you, thank you. Okay, next time got any coffee, you can treat. <laughs> <laughs> Right, right. Okay, so okay, so we we've covered quite a fair bit of uh ground. Okay, so one of the although now if, I think we are coming. Let's see. Oh, we we are coming close to an hour already. That's amazing. So, uh, one of the questions we actually want to ask a little bit is really talking a little bit about your future plan. So, uh, asking about the future plan, one of the things I like to do is also to go back a little bit in time, a little bit in time, and that question will comes about with this way. So, if you were to actually speak to a younger version of yourself, okay. You know, what advice would you uh, say to yourself to reach either a million dollars or a million people? Now, you've already collect, you actually had a million dollars come through your business. But if you were to go back in time, what would advice would you give to yourself back then? Mm. And perhaps maybe to make it a little bit more relevant also, a younger version of yourself now. So maybe, maybe these, two type, these two questions. Can. So I, I break it down into uh, a, a few different versions of the answer. Yeah. So I, I guess... I started my entrepreneur journey only when I'm in my 30s. So if I can actually advise my younger self is that uh, once you have the dream, before you need to seek all the clarities and all the know-how, right? you got to ask yourself, what should you do to achieve it? So of course, there will be a lot of uh, learning journeys along the way and you should not be afraid of falling down because you can always get up from there. And this is one. So to actually not asking, you know, why I should do it, but instead how I can do it and really take action. This one is actually number one. And there are also people, right, that they ask me this question, which one will be better to help 1 million people or to earn $1 million or to have $1 million in your bank account. Well, you see, uh, it, it, it's actually a chicken and egg thing. But let's say, for example, if I can put it into a very uh, logical way. Think about it. If 
you cannot have value for your target audience. You cannot provide value to this community or this world. Will it be possible for 1 million people to even give you $1, right? So that you can have a million dollars sitting in your bank account. The answer is straight no, not possible. Mm. Okay. So no one will give you $1 if you don't provide any value. So what I would like to say is that, right? Yes, you got to provide value first to actually impact people so that it will turn into the revenue or the income for yourself to have a million dollars sitting in your bank account. Okay, so this is the thing. So the chicken and egg thing, uh, you got to figure out for yourself, create value first. Mm. Okay, so then afterwards, the other question would be, if you were to speak to someone who is someone of your age now, mm. would, would the advice be the same? Speaking to people of my age now, mm. Wow, people oh, of age, my age. Maybe it's, it's a, a younger version of you now. Uh, okay. Well, I, I guess you see people who are in their 20s or 30s, we all have our commitments. Who doesn't have parents, right? Who doesn't have families or siblings or responsibilities on our shoulder? However, why some people are willing to do whatever it takes, right? To be able to live their mission, to be able to live life by their own design. Okay, so you should ask yourself this question, not I have, you know, parents, I got wife, I got kids, you know, I cannot afford to take risks. So you are actually putting these blocks or obstacles in front of you. Mm. But having that said, of course, if you are totally content with life, okay, then it is also okay. I respect your wish. I'm talking for people who are not content about life and they really want to do more. They want to provide more value. They want to impact more. Or probably business owner that want to scale their business or want to actually reach out to more customers or target audience. Yes, then you got to think about this. Hmm. Okay, thanks for sharing that. And we have, uh, so Nicholas actually mentioned this over here. So by teaching, you learn and from learning, you can teach true and <laughs> you just got it from fresh from Kenneth all right so plugging your wares awesome <laughs> okay so with this one I think what I like is that you know when you are talking to a version of yourself understanding and you said a little bit earlier you got to ask yourself how to do it and then also going back a, a, even earlier at the starting of this conversation you talked about that perseverance the determination right clarity determination actually you know what i actually typed it up why don't i just bring it up there we go right so clarity <laughs> determination and action this is what you actually mentioned at the very beginning and it ties in nicely i would say because you you that's what you've been actually doing so you're not you need to have clarity in what is it that you want right and then you work hard you have to take the determined be determined about it and then take a lot of action that goes toward it is that right yes yeah absolutely right Okay, okay, so uh, okay, so I'm not left. Wow, hey, and <laughs> you see your hashtag on your t shirt. Yeah, <laughs> action taker, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so this is uh, yeah, so this one is like this is an interesting shirt I got from a friend as well. So, very cool thing that I got. I was like, you know what, what should I wear today? Okay, I'm gonna just wear this one, but very, I don't know why, perhaps because of this, I'm becoming orange. So, <laughs> this is the I'm becoming an orange, already. so yeah, anyway, so. With that, so then, of, okay, the other question is with the final thing, because now we're coming to an hour, I want to respect your time as well, okay? So is there any parting words before we end and how can people reach you? And by the way, if any of you still have any questions, okay, please feel free to leave a comment right now. And I think uh, with a bit of time left, we'll be able to hold Joseph back just for a little bit longer, just for a little bit longer, so we can answer any of your questions, okay? Feel free to leave a questions right now. So Joseph, go ahead. So any parting words before we end and how can people reach you? Mm. Okay, so for people of the um, younger community or younger audiences, right? Let's say, for example, if you are aspiring entrepreneur, I will actually advise you to, you know, dare to live your dream. Really take actions to do it. Don't worry, you know, whether you will be successful or maybe you will um, fall along the way because you can always pick yourself up. Okay, so that's for the younger crowd. So for people who are already in business, okay, and you are looking into breakthrough, okay, uh, look into digital marketing. Digital marketing is really the way to go. If you are still in the brick and mortar and you are still using the traditional method, right, uh, very soon you will sell, find yourself uh, obsolete or losing out 
in terms of the competitive edge compared to other businesses who are going online. And let's say, for example, for people who have a calling, a mission, and they want to actually provide more value for certain communities or certain target groups, right? I would suggest you to also use social media using the digital space to be able to value, give value and educate and reach out to your target audience or to reach out to people who are like-minded like yourself to be able to do more things, do more things to the community that you want to actually impact. Mm. Okay, okay. So thanks for sharing those final words and for businesses, also remember that you're also here for impact. Okay, and I, I like those words because you're not just here to make an income of we, that which is important, but also possibly can make some impact in this lifetime here and now. So, okay, now I have a question from Kenneth. Okay, the, so this, even though as I say parting words, but you cannot part yet. <laughs> okay, so you gotta stick around for just a bit longer. Uh, so what's the 2021 marketing trends that you're seeing in the market, the most frequently asked questions from your top 10 clients in these past four months? Good question, mm. Kenneth. Okay. Uh, Kenneth, I'll get my staff to bill you in a bit. Huh? <laughs> okay, <laughs> just, just joking, just joking. All right. Well, you see, a lot of people, they always ask about, you know, what is actually the upcoming trend or, you know, what is actually the latest platforms? Is it TikTok? You no, know, is it something of uh, later than that? You know, I would believe, right, back to basis, right? Regardless which platform, LinkedIn, social media like Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, Douyin, etc., etc., right, or Twitter, those are different vehicles that can actually help you to reach out to your target audience. And you need to see who are those people who are in those different platforms or vehicles. But one thing never changed: what is your message to the public? Okay, so ask yourself this question. What do you want your target audience to know of you, to know you as? Mm. Then you keep repeating that message in multiple ways so that people remember you for it. That's also one of the ways how you can actually become the category king. Okay, mm -hmm. so that, that's actually, I, I hope I answer your first question. Okay, and Secondly, is that the frequently, most frequently asked from your top 10 clients in the first four months. Okay. Uh, most frequently asked, I, I don't see, <laughs> I, don't, I don't see how, how, how you can value add in this, uh, in this community. But what I can actually tell you is that there are many people who are engaging a uh, digital marketing agency or they are doing digital marketing on their own. They are generating interest leads. Or DMs, etc. However, many of them they say that digital marketing doesn't work. Okay, I'm burning money faster than I can get it. Okay, so if you actually um, encounter this, my question to you is that look into which aspect of your prospecting or your sales process is there a gap? Okay, so usually, let's say, for example, we talk about most industry on general, right? Prospecting phase means actually the marketing to reaching out to your target audience. And then, of course, they respond with an inquiry of probably a first sales. Secondly, is that, say, for example, the appointment setting. How do you actually set appointment? What is actually your appointment setting percentage? Let's say, for example, 100 people are interested or inquired. How many people come into your shop? How many people meet you face to face? How many people purchase your product, etc.? So this is actually the appointment setting. And then of course, number three is that, what is your closing ratio? Let's say for example, if you are a financial consultant, if you are a property uh, agent, let's say for example, even if you are in the beauty business, 10 people that walk into your shop or meet you, how many people end up buying a service or you know, buying the, the, the products from you. So this is closing ratio. Then finally is that, what is the value, the purchase value that each of them on average, right? We call it AOV, lah, average order value that people usually make the pur uh, first purchase of. So if you are able to track all this, right? Congratulations, you have completed the first part of your business. And of course, the secondly is, you know, how you can actually uh, get people to actually buy more and also the retention. So number one is build your base, get more people, 
which is get to get more new customers. Secondly, is that how do you get your customer to actually buy more? And thirdly, is that how do you retain your customer? Hmm. So I hope that these three can help you to you know gain more clarity in terms of how you can move your business forward. Yeah, thanks for asking that question, and I think he's uh, he is correct over here. So, so if you can ask for questions for free, he's there to ask. <laughs> so that's that's a that's a very good uh, way of looking at life as well. You know, ask for it. You know, you never know what you can get. And I think uh, Joseph has definitely given his uh, his input straight up. And um, yeah, so that's uh, I think okay, we've covered your parting words already. So okay, now I I, do, I just want one one more time. I just want to thank Joseph for you coming onto the show. Uh, to share this insights, we took an hour of your time uh, to learn from you and to really quick summarize. So, where where can they go to find you? Is this all the handles, or you just go live everywhere on where where are you found in social? Yes, yes, everywhere, everywhere you can use this Joseph Go Live, you'll find me. Yeah. Okay, okay. So if anybody wants to connect to Joseph, okay, uh, please hit him hit him up. Okay, just search for Joseph Go Live. Uh, your surname has an H, right? But this one doesn't have an H. So it, it's... <laughs> yes, so it's actually like a, a, a rhyme pun. Yeah, that I like to use this. So many of them, they ask me, like, hey, Joseph, do you have this name because of COVID? Because, you know, like people do a lot of Facebook Live or live video. They say, no, I already have Joseph Go Live long before COVID. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. So were they yeah. a bit curious? Uh, where where did the H go? Is it, is it staying at home? <laughs> staying under <Yeah>. quarantine? <laughs> <laughs> and apparently, right, there are people who, let's say, for example, they say that, so Joseph, your surname is G-O, right? Interesting surname, huh? I was laughing also. That's not my real surname, mm. la. My real surname is G-O-H. <laughs> 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 okay, okay. I can kind of see because like, all your handles are this. Because most people, you know, they, they I, I can see a little bit of why they were a little bit confused. Uh, so yeah. So once again, guys, if you're interested, you are watching this video right now. You want to hit him up, uh, especially if you happen to be in this area, educational, if in the beauty and wellness, if you are into the interior design. Okay, he has the call. He has the he has been servicing these customers already. But of course, is there any other uh maybe other industries or niches that are uh, except that's different from this that maybe perhaps you could tap into it. So maybe you can just share a little bit on that before we end also. Mm. Okay, uh, we do have many other um, businesses that come to us. So like, for example, we are actually helping a water dispensing company. We also have even like, for example, um, financial organization. So organization on its own. Uh, uh, that's actually, we are helping them to do in terms of the agent recruitments. So we are also helping uh, businesses in like for example, uh, yacht chatter chattering. So we can actually work with many different businesses. But what we want to do is that instead of being a rojak, right, serving everyone, we have actually find a niche that we understand that business deeply in order to help them. Hmm. Mm. But we are, of course, open to explore. If you have a business and you have certain clarity that you would like to amplify on the online space, yes, I'm very open to, you know, like speaking to you. Mm. Okay, thank you, Joseph, for your time. Very much appreciated. So, uh, with without further ado, I just guys just wave digital goodbye to Joseph for now. Okay, but again, just feel free again to hit him up again once more. So, Joseph, I'll chat with you in a bit. All right, thanks for coming on to the show, man. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay, bye. All right, so guys, once again, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate you for coming onto this show, The Starting Million. So I had the uh, privilege of inviting Joseph to come onto the show together with us for, for me to pick onto his brains. And of course, with your questions, okay, we were able to dig it even more of the questions, uh, that's all the, uh, the knowledge that he has inside his brain, okay, inside his head. Uh, and again, once more, uh, congratulations to for winning that two CC award, and uh, hopefully you're gonna get to the next one, the two CC X award. All right, so this is uh, from Waima is doing the digital wave as well. Okay, so thanks so much, uh, Waima, for joining the show. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you once more for coming on. This is the end of the show. I will see you next time. Take care. Good night. God bless. Actually, depending on what time it is. Good night. God bless.